Hi everyone. In this lesson, we are going to learn some reactions of halogens. In the first part of this lesson, let's look at the reaction of halogens with hydrogen. This is the general equation of halogens react with hydrogen, where X represents fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Fluorine combines explosively with hydrogen, even in the cold and dark, to give hydrogen fluoride gas. Chlorine and hydrogen explode if exposed to sunlight or a flame to give hydrogen chloride gas. Bromine vapor and hydrogen combine with a mild explosion if we put in a flame. In this reaction, hydrogen bromide gas is formed. In the industry, hydrogen bromide gas is produced by using platinum catalyst at a temperature around 200 degrees Celsius. Iodine and hydrogen only combine partially even on constant heating. An equilibrium is set up between the hydrogen and iodine and hydrogen iodide gas. In the industry, the composition of hydrogen iodide to give hydrogen gas is done with platinum catalyst and temperature of about 400 degrees Celsius. On going down group 17, the reactivity of halogens with hydrogen decreases because the oxidizing power and the bond strength of the elements decrease. Just now, we look at the formation of hydrogen halide. And now, in this part, we are going to look at the decomposition of hydrogen halide back into hydrogen and halogen. Hydrogen fluoride and hydrogen chloride are very stable to heat. They don't split up into hydrogen and fluorine or chlorine again if heated to any normal lab temperature. Hydrogen bromide splits slightly into hydrogen and bromine on heating. Hydrogen iodide splits to an even greater extent. The decomposition of hydrogen halides involve the breaking of the covalent bond between the hydrogen atom and the halogen atom. Therefore, we shall study the bond energy of the hydrogen halide to explain the trend of the thermal stability. The longer the bond length, the weaker the bond, and hence the lower the bond energy. This is how we can explain the trend of the thermal stability. On going down the group, the atomic size increases. Hydrogen halide bond becomes weaker. The amount of energy needed to break the hydrogen halide bond becomes lesser. The thermal stability of the hydrogen halides decreases. We can also use the same point to explain on the acidity of the hydrohalide acids. When hydrogen fluoride dissolves in water, hydrofluoric acid is produced. When hydrogen chloride dissolves in water, hydrochloric acid is produced. The same goes for hydrogen bromide and hydrogen iodide, which hydrobromic acid and hydriodic acid are produced. With the exception of hydrofluoric acid, which is a weak acid, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, and hydriodic acid are all strong acids. The explanation for hydrofluoric acid as a weak acid not only lies on the very high strength of the bond between hydrogen and fluorine, which leads to the weak ionization of hydrogen ion. This is because the high hydration energy of the fluoride ion more or less compensates for the high bond strength between hydrogen and fluorine. So, hydrofluoric acid is weak because the hydrogen ion and the fluoride ion are not free like hydrochloric acid dissolves in water. Instead, the hydrogen ion and fluoride ion form bind themselves too strongly. Now, let's compare the acidity of the strong acids. Based on the Ka values, acidity strength increases from hydrochloric acid to hydriotic acid. 
The larger the key A value, the stronger the acid. This is how we can explain on the increase in acidity from hydrochloric acid to hydriodic acid. On going down the group, the atomic size increases. Hydrogen halide bond becomes weaker. The amount of energy needed to break the hydrogen halide bond becomes lesser. Acidity strength increases because hydrogen ion becomes easier to ionize. As a reminder, we have to be extra careful when explaining the trend of the properties involving group 17. This is because when it involves the fluorine element, the explanation is a little different. Therefore, to be on the safe side, when answering questions in the exam, we don't include fluorine in the explanation of the common trend of the halogens. The explanation would be like, from hydrochloric acid to hydrochloric acid, the trend is, and so on, and so on. Or another example, from chlorine to iodine, the trend is, and so on, and so on. In the next part of the lesson, we will look at the reactions with sodium hydroxide solution. Once again, we will just look at this for chlorine, bromine, and iodine. The reaction of halogens and aqueous sodium hydroxide are all disproportionation reaction. This proportionation reaction is a redox reaction in which an element simultaneously oxidized and reduced to form at least two different products. The reaction between chlorine and cold dilute sodium hydroxide solution produces sodium chloride. Sodium chloride 1 or the full name for this is sodium hypochlorite and water. The product mixture solution is what is normally sold as bleach. Now, think about this in terms of oxidation states. The chlorine has changed oxidation state from 0 in chlorine to negative 1 in sodium chloride and positive 1 in sodium chloride 1. Chlorine is both oxidized and reduced. This is a good example of a disproportionation reaction. Now, let's look at the reaction between chlorine and hot concentrated sodium hydroxide solution. The unfamiliar product this time is sodium chloride 5, NaClO3. Now, think about this in terms of oxidation states. The chlorine has changed oxidation state from 0 in chlorine to negative 1 in sodium chloride and positive 5 in sodium chloride 5. Chlorine is again both oxidized and reduced. This is also an example of a disproportionation reaction. Now, I put these two equations together so that we can see the different products formed in cold dilute sodium hydroxide and hot concentrated sodium hydroxide. The products are different because when sodium chloride 1 is heated, it disproportionates forming sodium chloride and sodium chloride 5. The reaction between bromine and sodium hydroxide is essentially similar to the chlorine, the difference being the temperature at which the reaction happens. With bromine, the formation of sodium bromate 1 happens at a much lower temperature of about 0 degrees Celsius. Similarly, when sodium bromate 1 is heated at a higher temperature, not that high but at about room temperature, it disproportionates to bromide ion and bromate 5 ion. In the case of iodine and sodium hydroxide solution, you should get sodium iodide, sodium iodate 5 and water. However, if the question insists on reaction of iodine with cold dilute sodium hydroxide, then the equation should look like this. What we can see here is the tendency to form the ion with the halogen in the positive 5 oxidation states increases rapidly on going down the group. Let's do some practice. 
In the reaction between the halogens and hydrogen, describe briefly how the reactivity changes on going down the group. The equation for the reaction between cold dilute potassium hydroxide solution and chlorine is this. By working out the oxidation states of all the chlorines in the equation, explain what is the redox reaction. Name the products of the reaction between chlorine and hot concentrated potassium hydroxide solution and write the equation for the reaction. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.